Hey, what's up, guys? Today, we're going to create ourselves a little piece of UI over here that is going to keep track of which wave we're on and also how many enemies are left on the screen. Or not on the screen, I mean on the map. <laughs> so, without further ado, guys, let's. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be creating some UI to display the wave information we're currently in, and also we're going to be using what we did last uh, last video, and we're going to be displaying how many enemies are there on the map right now. So, in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll start by creating myself a empty game object, and this is going to be called UI Manager. So. Um, UI Manager is also going to take a script that we're going to call UI Manager script, and this is going to be another of those system script. So go ahead, take the script, put it inside the system folder, just like this, and then we're going to open it up. Okay, so this script is going to pretty much control our UI. So, uh, well, first off, what we'll do up here is uh, in the import we'll say using unity engine dot UI okay and then public class UI manager is going to inherit from mono singleton template UI manager good so now we can clean this up as we always do and we are going to declare ourselves some game object fields first one public game object I'm going to call root and then I'll put a space in between the other one. This one is going to be called game object wave actually with a, a small letter wave info just like this. And uh this UI manager is going to contain a lot of stuff, so we need to try and keep it clean as much as we can. So right below the public game object wave info, I am going to declare myself a private text array, so a uh an array of multiple text object that I'm going to call wave info text, just like this. Okay, and this is our wave information section, obviously. Then we'll go a little bit down here and we'll say public override void init, which is our start, and we'll assign that in wave information um, array of text. We'll say wave info text is equal is equal to wave info dot get components in children so make sure there's an s and we're getting all the text component out of it okay and now what happens is um, we have all these reference but now we need to write to our text so we'll create ourselves a function a public void draw wave info function and in there we'll simply say wave info text at the index say zero dot text is equal to current wave and then we just had a number here so same thing for the next one wave info text at the index one dot text is equal to enemies left at uh, well zero for now as well Okay, so now I've pretty much created a script, but there is no, you know, that there is no actual text um, drawn on the screen, and we're going to create those text container right now. So here we have two fields: we have the current wave field and also the enemies left. So we need we need a text object for both of these. Let's go back in game and start creating our UI. We are going to right click in the R key and then UI and then we're going to choose a canvas so I call this canvas UI root and inside of the UI root we're going to modify the canvas scaler a little bit we'll make sure that it is scale width screen size and we're going to use a reference resolution of say uh, 1280 by 720 you can put whatever you want there uh, depending on what kind of screen you want to publish your game too. So, mine is going to be 1280 by 720. After that, what we'll do is we'll right click again and we'll do uh, UI and we're going to add a panel. This panel is going to be the wave information panel. In order to see it, what we're going to do is put our scene in 2D. So, the little button over here, we're going to click it and then we can see our um, 
a UI, just like this. The wave information panel is going to be, say, just a little square top right of my screen. So to do that, I'll click on the rect transform here, and then double click on the top right square here to anchor it. I'm also going to hold the shift to move the pivot point as well. Now that this is done, I can choose which uh, kind of sizing I want. So 300 by say 200, and it's going to give it this nice little shape, and it's going to snap top right as well. Okay, so this is my wave information object. If you remember correctly, in my UI manager, I have the root and the wave info uh, public game object. So drag and drop the root in there and then wave info in the other one. So wave information needs to have some text in there. So we're going to hit right click on it, UI text. The first one is current wave. So I'm going to name this one current wave, just like this, and then change the text for, say, temporary, actually, I'll just call it current wave. And then we have another text, so copy paste this, and this is the enemies left. Same thing here, I'm going to modify the text a little bit, enemies left. And then you can put it pretty much uh, anywhere you want uh, to make it look nice, you can have your custom sizing and your placement as much as you want but what I'll do on my side is I'll go back inside the panel so the wave information panel and over here I'll add a vertical layout group so this is going to make sure that every object under that panel is being scaled and resized properly depending on how many there is so say if I was to copy paste these you can see that they uh, properly scale with the amount of object inside the panel so, um, now that these are placed correctly, I'm going to modify the alignment of the text on both. I'll maybe put it at, say, 23 in size, like this. And then you can also change the color and pretty much do whatever you want. This is the text object, and it just, it is really easy to style it up. Okay. So we're drawing information from the wave, but as you can see over here, we're not actually getting any kind of information. It's simply going to say current wave zero at any time in the game. So what we'll do is um, we'll go add a, um, a function inside of level manager because level manager is the one that takes care of the waves and all that good stuff. So we want to be able to retrieve information from there. And then we'll simply add our function uh, to replace zero. So let's go inside of Level Manager. We're going to add ourselves some uh, fields that are going to be useful later on for other things as well. So private int current wave is equal to nothing for now. Let's just leave it like that. And then below that, private int amount of wave. Also not going to initialize just yet because I'll do it inside the initialize function. Down here, under initialize, we're going to say current wave is equal to zero and amount of wave is equal to waves dot count. And we need to do this after we had uh, the waves, of course. So we've just changed the values of current wave and amount of waves. What needs to happen now is we need to be able to um, get that information and pretty much call it from our UI manager. So down here, I'll create a new function just above victory. I'll say public string get wave information. Or let's just shorten it up. We're going to say get wave info instead. And in here, since we're returning a string, we're simply going to say return current wave and then we format it uh, what, in whatever way you want. I'll just put a slash in between the boat of them and then current wave slash amount of wave. So we're pretty much returning a script, not a script, but a string that looks like this. So this is wave 0 out of 5, wave 1 out of 5, and so on. Okay, so get wave info. Now we can call this from our UI manager. So we're going to come over here, going to say level manager.instance.getWaveInfo, 
and it is simply going to put the two strings together. Now, as for the enemies left, we already made a function for that uh, last episode. So let's go ahead and call the spell manager dot instance dot get enemies left, just like this. And now everything should be working just fine. If we hit play and say so we start a wave, there's of course no modification and the reason why is because we're not calling it from anywhere. We don't want this to be updating every single frame because it's going to be, well, formatting string every frame is a little bit costy. So we just need to update this whenever information change. So what we'll do is we're going to check where exactly this information change. We know that it's going to be modify in the level manager um, up here. So after we define how many waves there is, then we can say UI manager dot instance dot draw me the wave information please. And it is also going to be modified when the wave increases. So whenever we enter the start wave, first thing we need to do is say well first current wave plus plus because we just we just entered a new wave, so we just switch wave. And the uh, the value change. So since the value change, we need to be calling UI manager dot instance that draw wave information at the bottom of this function. Now as for the enemies, when we enter the game, um, there is no enemy, so we don't really need to modify that just yet. The current wave is going to take care of that. And uh, but well, we're spawning enemies at one point, and th this value pretty much changes, and it needs to be written on the screen. So whenever we spawn these enemies. We should be saying UI manager that instance that draw wave info. Same thing when we destroy them over here. And I think that's pretty much it for the enemies. Let's go check in game now if we get these calls. So we just started the game and um well the wave list got initialized and then after that we drew the information we have. So we only have one wave in this level, which is correct. There is no enemy left on the screen, which is also correct. And then I'm going to spawn some. So I'm going to press K. We're now on uh, the current wave 1 1, and we are getting some error. So let me just go fix that real quick. Okay, so I just figured out why we have this error. It's a little bit complicated, but what happens pretty much is um, if you look at the scene right now, we have two spell manager. We have the one that we uh, set initially. And there's also another one that got created here. And the reason that happened is because in our level manager script, we say UI manager that instance of draw wave info, and then that calls the level manager. But since we're doing it inside of the initialize, uh, there is chances that the spell manager is not even initialized yet. So it might not even be there in memory. And uh, because of that, we can't we can't be putting that here. We can't be putting the UI manager that instance that raw wave info inside of a initialize. So we need to remove it from the initialize here. Now we hit play. And well, it is it is not updated just yet. But when we hit K, you can see that it is now being updated, and we're not getting the same error as we were. So we're going to need to find another place where we can um, pretty much say okay now you can modify because the level is ready and we are we're ready to write something to the screen because all the information is available so in order to fix this what we'll do is just below the init we're going to create ourselves a private void start function and we're going to do our call in there instead so ui manager instance draw wave info and the reason this is going to work is because the start is called after the initialize. In current wave 0 out of 1, we have 0 enemy left. We hit K. Now we're on the first wave and enemies are starting to spawn. And it is working properly. Yep, so we just tested when they're spawning, when they're despawning, and also when the wave is starting. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. If this was helpful to you, please leave it a like. If you have any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, subscribe for more of these tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.